morning. morning. And welcome to our service this morning. I extend a special welcome to Hanya's family and friends, and we look forward to Hanya's baptism as our service unfolds this morning. A couple of intimations. Last Sunday, I think Dorothy can't hear me at the, at the back. Dorothy, any better? Can folks hear me okay? Thank you. Last Sunday we had a retiral collection for Christian Aid's appeal for the Afghanistan crisis and that appeal, that one-off collection, raised a fantastic sum of £577. That money will now be going off to Christian Aid and just a very big thank you for that effort to a very worthwhile cause. Now, today is the deadline for any material for our February parishioner. So if you have anything that you would like in print in our next magazine, can I ask that you get that to our editor, Sandra Burns, today. And finally, over the last few weeks, we have been mentioning the session five-week course called Be Still, and that's based on the book by Brian Heasley, and it will be on Zoom uh, over a period of five weeks, about an hour every week, and that is an opportunity to watch a video and just have a discussion about our quiet time with God. And that is now going to start this week, so it will be on Wednesday evening this week, 2nd of February, and that is at 7.30 p.m. So you will be getting details of that if you've already responded to Ruth, but equally there is still a chance to join that weekly meeting if you are interested. There's still material in print as you're leaving church this morning, and if you contact Ruth, you will also receive details of that meeting on Zoom. So it's over a period of five weeks, but it starts this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Those are all of my intimations. So as we prepare for worship this morning, let us turn to the day's thought for prayer. Let us pray. God, our strength and our Redeemer, we come before you with our own thoughts and prayers for our families and friends, both near and far. We remember especially the Ewart family and Hanya, who will be baptized today. We come to listen to your words to each of us. We come asking for your guidance and wisdom in the days that lie ahead. Lord, we pray together as a church family trying to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, our friend and our companion. We give thanks and praise for your love which surrounds us, your Holy Spirit which inspires and encourages us, and Jesus who walks with us every step of the way. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. And a very warm welcome to our worship here in St. Mary's today. Friends, we are known, we are held, and we are loved. And so gather in, friend and stranger. Gather in together, in person or online. And let us stand and raise our voices in praise and worship God, who is eternal love. Let's stand together and sing our opening praise 123. God is love, let heaven adore him. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? Good, good. And I know there's some boys and girls over here as well. Welcome. I hope you've all had a good week. I've got a question for you this morning. Do you have a favourite book or a favourite story? Anybody got a favourite book or a favourite story? Grace. Paw Patrol books. Yep, you like your Paw Patrol? Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah, they're good books, aren't they? Yeah, good stories. Any others? Oh, that's okay. Well, I've got some characters from stories here, and I wonder if I tell you the characters, if you can tell me which books they might come from, okay? So the first characters are Piglet, Christopher Robin, and Eeyore. Which stories are they from? Yeah. Winnie the Pooh, absolutely spot on. Winnie the Pooh. What about Peppa, George, and Miss Rabbit? What, where might you find them? Grace. Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig, yes. You've got lots of Peppa Pig books, haven't you? Yeah. What about Marshall, Sky, and Chase? Yep. Paw Patrol. Yep, absolutely right. Well done. What about Dennis the Menace, Minnie the Minx, and Roger the Dodger? <laughs> You're thinking. 
you know, the Beano. We were delighted to find some Beano comics in Tesco. You like your Beano, don't you? You did get one. Yep, what about Mr. Angry, Mr. Happy, Mr. Lazy? What series are they part of? What books? Anybody? You're, I think you're right. You're absolutely spot on. Yep, the Mr. Men books, lots of different characters in there. And what about this, the last one? The Queen of Hearts, the White Rabbit, and the Mad Hatter. Yep. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Yep. Lots of characters there from lots of different stories. And stories are good, aren't they? This morning, I want to remind us of a book that we read every week in church. Which book might that be? Yeah. The Bible. You're absolutely right. We read from the Bible every week. And I've brought one of my Bibles. It won't surprise you to know that as a minister, I've got quite a lot of Bibles at home. But this is one of the first one I ever had. And it was given to me way back in 93. I was a bit shocked when I read the date in that this morning. And that was the promotion to the Bible class. And it's a good news Bible and it looks like one book, but actually inside there's 66 different books full of all kinds of stories of adventure and action and battles and danger and romance and there's songs and there's wise words and it's split into two, the Old Testament at the front and the New Testament at the back. And it's in the New Testament that we hear stories about Jesus. And we're going to hear a story today in church of Jesus going to his church, his synagogue, and he stands up and he reads from the scriptures there. And he says some words that remind them that the Bible, the scriptures are a living book. That it's not just what God has said in the past, but when we read our Bibles, we, we can think about what God might be saying to us in the present. And it's words there to inspire us and to guide us. And you know, more than all of that, it's a book that tells us just how much God loves us. Not just some people, but everyone, the whole world over. And that's not just news, that is good news. And that's what we're going to be thinking about in church today. Will we have a wee prayer? Lord God, thank you for stories and books, for those who teach us how to read, and for those who read to us throughout the week. And thank you, Lord, for the Bible that we can turn to to learn more about you, more about Jesus, and more about your wonderful love for all the world. And Lord, it was in the Bible that we hear words of Jesus teaching us how to pray together. And so we join in those words now, in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen well we're going to sing again and we're not going to turn to our hymn books we're going to turn to the sheet of paper you were given when you arrived in church today and we're going to sing jesus love is very wonderful now, I know the actions for the second part, but I'm wondering if there's actions for the beginning as well. Is there, Louise? Can you remind us what they are, please? Yeah, if you come out, it shows. <laughs> love is very wonderful. Yeah, Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. Oh, oh we're getting fancy. Well, we love her there, okay. And then when we get to the next bit, it's so high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Okay, so you've got options for love. You can either do that or you can do that. 
or you don't have to do any of that. But it'd be great if you want to join in. So we're going to do that twice through. So let's stand together and sing, Jesus' love is very wonderful. have a wee seat. That's great. And thank you, David, for playing that for us this morning. It's now time for our young church to head over to the halls. And if there's any young people who would like to go and join in there this morning, then you're very welcome. And you will be brought back in time for Hanya's baptism later in the service. Approach God in prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful God who loves us with an eternal and uncompromising love, a love that is patient and kind, that keeps no record of wrongs, a love that delights in the truth and celebrates with us in joy, a love that endures all things and holds us in suffering, a love that doesn't give up, but keeps on believing and willing and hoping that we will hear and receive and live out the good news. We come as followers and seekers, some skeptics and doubters, all gathered together as a community here today and pray that as we turn to your word, we might be open to hear it, open to receive it, open to becoming all that you have created us to be. Holy Spirit, move among us, comfort and console us, prod us and nudge us, Stir and shake and show us your leading in this place that we might know, really know, that we are loved and forgiven. And hear that your good news is for everyone. And together discover what that looks like as we seek to follow Jesus into a new week in this town. Wonderful God, who loves us with an eternal and uncompromising love, this is our prayer that we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today's reading comes from the New Testament. Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 30. Jesus begins his work in Galilee. Then Jesus returned to Galilee, and the power of the Holy Spirit was with him. 
the news about him spread throughout all that territory. He taught in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. Jesus is rejected at Nazareth. Then Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath, he went as usual to the synagogue. He stood up to read the scriptures and was handed the book of the prophet of Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the people in the synagogue had their eyes fixed on him as he said to them, this passage of scripture has come true today as you heard it being read. They were all well impressed with him and marveled at the eloquent words that he spoke. They said, isn't he the son of Joseph? He said to them, I am sure that you will quote this proverb to me. Doctor, heal yourself. You will also tell me to do here in my hometown the same things you heard when in, in Capernaum. I tell you this, Jesus added, a prophet is never welcomed in his hometown. Listen to me, it is true that there were many widows in Israel during the time of Elijah, when there was no rain for three and a half years and a severe famine spread throughout the whole land. Yet Elijah was not sent to anyone in Israel, but only to a widow living in Zerphath in the territory of Sidon. And there were many people suffering from a dreaded skin disease who lived in Israel during the time of the prophet of Elisa. Yet not one of them was healed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with anger. They rose up, dragged Jesus out of the town and took him to the top of the hill on which their town was built. They meant to throw him over the cliff, but he walked through the middle of the crowd and went his way. Amen, and may God add his blessing to his holy words. Our next hymn is number 608, Spirit of Truth and Grace. Hymn 608.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I turned to the gospel lesson for this week, I was reminded of some wise words that were said to me a few years ago now by a kind and faithful lady who made sure that a cup of tea and some biscuits were always waiting for me when I arrived from conducting one service at 10 o'clock and then made the journey a mile along the road to conduct the second service at 11.30. Sometimes that was a bit of a rush. And I can't quite remember what prompted her comment this one particular day. But as she left the vestry, she looked at me and she said, you know what, Ruth? Jesus could get into that pulpit and they still wouldn't be happy. These words still make me smile and they still make me wonder on days when I ponder what this task of preaching is all about. And they really hit hard today as we hear about Jesus returning to his hometown of Nazareth. In Luke's account, just before this, Jesus has been baptized. He spent time in the wilderness being tested and tempted, and now he's back. And news about him is spreading, and he's been teaching, and everyone seems happy with what he is saying. At least, that is, until he comes home. As usual, as was his habit, he gathers with others for worship in the synagogue, something that he'd done since he was a little boy. It was a familiar place to him, among well-kent faces. And as was the custom, some folks would take it in turns to read from the scripture, standing to do so, and then sitting to teach. And that day, at the very start of his ministry, Jesus stands to read from the scroll. He's given Isaiah, which for us is 66 chapters, but Jesus doesn't turn to the beginning. He turns, having taken a moment to find the place, to the words that he wants to speak in their presence. Words from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. In that moment, words of promise from hundreds of years ago, words of hope of a coming Messiah were read and heard, and the worshippers are stunned. They are amazed, eyes fixed upon him not least when he makes the staggering claim. Today, this word has come true. Today, it is fulfilled in your presence. Jesus could have chosen any words from the Torah, but he chooses these ones to reveal to them who he is, to show them what his mission is all about and to point to the good news of the kingdom, to point to himself. Of course, it quite quickly becomes clear that not everyone is happy. He's not what they expected. Just who does he, Joseph's boy, think he is? And what do you mean, talking about Elisha and Elijah, that God's love is higher and wider and deeper and broader than those just who are like us? and you ain't going to work no miracles here. Yes, Jesus could get into the pulpit, and they still wouldn't be happy, so much so that they would chase him out of town. Because isn't it the case that sometimes when confronted with Jesus, the truth hurts? Even when that truth, that good news, is for us too. We can't receive it because 
We can't believe it. Does God really love me? Or maybe because we can't see it. We look around our world and think, well, if God is real, why is it in such a mess? Or because it's too challenging, making us consider and reflect upon our own lives and circumstances and ways and demands of us change. And sometimes because we just can't believe that God would include others in his love that we might keep at arm's length. But you know, this good news, this Jesus whose birth in Bethlehem we have recently celebrated, whose ministry and mission we have just heard declared, and whose death and resurrection we will soon explore at length and Easter really is for us all, everyone. And for us who call ourselves Christians, who belong to his body, the church, and seek to follow him and become more like him in our living, the good news, as we know, doesn't end in the hearing. These angels that have been with us for several weeks now as we traveled through Advent and on into Epiphany in this new year, they remind us of the words we heard at Christmas. Words from the angels that said, do not be afraid. Angels who delivered good news to ordinary folk like you and to me. And well, these angels this week, they're going to fly off. They are going to leave the chancel area. But as they do so, We must remember that we too, like those angels, are messengers of God. For we not only receive the good news, but having been baptized into his body, we have to be messengers of it too. We who live in a country with more food banks in it than McDonald's restaurants. We who live in a country who at this time are among people who need to choose between heating or eating. In a world where folks are consumed by fear, not least of the other or the different. In communities where drug deaths are high and aspirations low and the gaps between the haves and the haves not grow and our fragile planet seeks some breathing space, we must become bearers of God's good news. I've had a hymn dancing in my head all week long and I nearly chose it for our closing one today, and it's him 251. And it says, the angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice, and of peace. The task is mine to do, to set it really free. Oh, help me to obey. Help me to do your will. The task is mine. The task is yours, the task is ours. And with Jesus, we can do it. And we don't, and you know, we don't always know what that might look like. But nevertheless, we must together try and work it out. For we are the church, caught up in the mission of Jesus because God loves people and the good news is for everyone starting with the poor and those bound in fear and systems and relationships that diminish and the spiritually blind and the oppressed, whoever they are and wherever they may be or come from, the work begun continues and it does so in you and in me. Jesus could get into the pulpit and they still wouldn't be happy. So be it. 
Let us get on with the work he has started and do our bit in the power of the Spirit as we pray God's kingdom come. Let us pray. Gracious God, our creator and our source, we present ourselves today and every day in thanks for your word, which is sometimes hard to hear. Thanks for your guidance and thanks too for your love. As we seek to be ever more like you and more fully ourselves, we come before you in prayer for our troubled world, torn apart by greed, by a failure of stewardship, by inequality, by war and disease. Help us and all those who can to find new ways and new strengths to help and to heal, to bring justice, and your saving message of good news to all whom we meet. We pray for our communities as we search for ways to break down barriers of fear and isolation. Shine the light of your love into the darkness of ignorance and distance and help us to live and to embrace your life-giving commandment to love one another. We pray too for your churches in this time of worry as we seek to find our place in this world of competing priorities. Reignite the flame of faith in our hearts. Help us to find new ways to spread your mission and message to our world so in need of your love. For Lord, today we also pray for those who are in pain, all those bereaved, all those doubting, all those struggling, especially to pay bills, all those on the margins, all those in the thin place between life and death, and those who sit with them or hold them in thought all those we hold so dearly in our hearts. Lord, in the silence, hear our prayers. Gracious God, our creator and our source, these are our prayers that we offer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, as we prepare and approach the moment of Hanya's baptism, we're going to sing again. And we're going to make this our baptismal hymn. And that is 600 and 31, a little child, the Saviour came.
just waiting for our young church um, to come back over to the sanctuary. And I'm going to do things a little bit differently today because after the last baptism I conducted, which was the first one here, Grace said to me, Mummy, I couldn't see the baptism. And it was that point I realized that actually the way the family were standing, young church couldn't see anything. So we're going to do things a little bit different. Welcome back. Great stuff. Craig and Dorota and all your family and friends, it's such a pleasure to have you in church today. But you're no strangers to this place. You have been worshipping in St. Mary's for some time now, and Hanya has been making her presence known week on week, which has just been absolutely lovely. So it's great to have you here today for this very special occasion, and that is baptism. And in baptism, well, there's many places in the Bible where baptism is mentioned. Jesus himself was baptized in the River Jordan, and as he was coming out of the water, the heavens opened, and a dove descended, and he heard the voice say, this is my precious son with whom I am well pleased. And that's what started his ministry. And then at the very end of Matthew's gospel, when Jesus is risen, he says this word, go into all the world and make disciples and baptize them into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that is what we are going to do today. A day for thanksgiving as through the waters of baptism, Hanya is assured of the love that God has for her as the sign and seal of the Holy Spirit is placed upon her and we affirm something that is already true and that is she belongs to God. And so with that in mind, Craig and Dorota, can I ask you please to stand? And Kai, you can stand too if you want. Today, do you give thanks to God for the gift of Hanya? <laughs> and in bringing Hanya for baptism, do you confess your faith in God, the loving creator, in Jesus Christ in and through whom we are promised life, and in the Holy Spirit, our helper and our guide? Thank you. I'm going to ask Kai if he would like to. We can't have a baptism without water, can we? No, that wouldn't be very good. So do you want to pour the water into the font there? Fantastic. Great stuff. Well done, you're doing a grand job. Keep going. We'll put it all out. Fantastic. Thank you, Kai. I'll pop that there. There you are. And so the font is set. Let us pray. Gracious God, this morning, as we prepare to witness and celebrate the sacrament of baptism, we are reminded that this is a special day made possible by you. For in baptism we see a sign of your love that reaches out to welcome all. We see a symbol of your grace that is poured out so that all might be renewed and made whole. And we see the seal of your promise to us as through water and spirit, you claim us as your own. Set us free from the power of death that we might follow and grow in the way of your kingdom and live in your presence forever. For in baptism, your love is offered to each one of us. And though it is a mystery we cannot understand or explain, we are called to accept it with the openness and trust of a child. And so, gracious God, we come with thankfulness for this special day, for the gift of Hanya, for her family, and for all the love which surrounds us. Encircle us then with your presence, fill us with your grace, grant us your peace, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this water as you claim and seal Hanya as your own. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. As God's parents, Adam and Patricia, can I ask you folks to stand? And can I ask everyone else to stand as well, please? Right, Anne, are you coming? There you are. Hello. You're looking nice and cosy, aren't you? Let's come over here. There you are. Hi, Anya. Anya, today we say loud and clear that it was for you that Jesus came into the world. For you, he lived and he showed God's love. For you, he suffered the darkness of Good Friday and said at the end, it is finished. For you, he triumphed over death and rose to newness of life at Easter and now sits at the right hand of God. Hanya, all of this was for you, even though you know nothing of it today which just goes to prove that we can love God because God first loves us. And so we're going to baptize you now into God's family. The moment of truth, here we go. <laughs> there you are. Hanya Nell, I baptize you into the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may the blessing of God descend upon you and dwell in your heart this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's stay standing and let's sing together the ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Yes. <laughs> is now baptized into the fellowship of the faith and we receive and welcome her as a member of the one holy and apostolic church there will always be a place for her in here and so some promises to our parents and godparents and the whole congregation and family Craig and Dorita do you promise with God's help to continue to provide a loving home for Hanya and to bring her up in the faith of the gospel and so far as you are able in the fellowship of the church. Adam and Patricia and friends gathered here and the congregation of St. Mary's, do you promise to care for Hanya, to encourage and support her parents and keeping the promises that they have made today so that she might grow in the grace and the knowledge that the love of God has for her. Thank you. May God help us all to keep these promises. Please be seated, everyone. There you are. As a reminder of this special day, Young Church have some gifts for you. There you are. There you are, and a certificate as well to remind you of the date that you were baptised. Oh, you're looking at me with great suspicion, thinking, what were you doing? <laughs> Friends, before we sing our closing hymn, let's pray for Hanya and for her family. God of love, guide and guard Hanya all her days. May your love hold her, your truth direct her, 
your joy delight her so that as she grows up she might listen for your voice and laugh and sing and wonder as she learns more about you bless her parents dorita and craig and god's parents adam and patricia and her big brother kai give to them wisdom and courage laughter and peace and that love that endures all things and lord Touch us all again this day with the promise of this sacrament, with a spirit of joy and hope that enables us to face the future with courage, trusting always in your loving purposes and seeking in all our living to be followers of Jesus with love at our core each and every day. May it increasingly and always be so Amen. Friends, as we draw our time here together to a close and remember that we are to be messengers and bearers of God's good news, let us stand and sing our closing hymn 352, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. have heard the good news and now let us go and live it wherever we find ourselves this week and the blessing of God the Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and remain with you forevermore <laughs>